Listen closely, because what I'm about to tell you challenges a common belief in both history circles and survival communities. During World War II, when resources were scarce and every ounce of material mattered, soldiers weren't always relying on classic heavy-duty canvas. In fact, one of the toughest, most storm-resistant, shrapnel-defying materials used in the field wasn't woven like traditional cloth at all. It came from paper. Yes, paper, transformed under wartime pressure into a survival-grade fibre fabric that outperformed canvas in certain extreme conditions. While bomb blasts shredded tents and tore through tarps, this strange paper-derived fabric held its form, resisted tearing, and weathered brutal rain and wind without collapsing. It wasn't a gimmick. It was innovation born from necessity, and it quietly became one of the unsung battlefield materials that helped soldiers survive in conditions most of us couldn't last a night in. Now, let's break this down clearly. Because knowing how this material worked not only deepens your respect for World War II engineering, but also gives you a tactical edge in modern preparedness. If a fibre made from paper scraps could save lives under shrapnel fire, what can we learn from it today? When wartime rationing hit hard, especially in Japan and parts of Europe, traditional cotton supplies were prioritised for uniforms and medical use. So militaries turned to washi-based fibres, cellulose-based craft paper and chemically pulped wood fibres. These were shredded, blended with resins and oils and tightly compressed into sheets, then reinforced through cross-layered lamination or early adhesive bonding. The result was a cloth-like material with layered tensile strength, kind of like modern ripstop or Tyvek except thicker and treated with waterproofing compounds. Japan took this especially seriously with kamenuno and resin-treated paper cloth used for everything from rain capes to provisional field tents. Some German units experimented with paper fiber gear to replace canvas in vehicle covers due to cotton shortages. When properly treated with drying oil, lacquer or phenolic resin, this paper cloth hardened into an incredibly durable, flexible shield that resisted tearing far better than untreated canvas. Canvas tears when a single point takes too much load or force. But this layered cellulose material, you know, distributed impact through multiple fused layers, sort of like early versions of laminated composites. The fibres didn't give way at once. Shrapnel and sharp debris could embed, but not always penetrate. Reports from Pacific and Eastern Front soldiers recall makeshift papercloth ponchos still functional after explosions that, well, shredded nearby fabric. The waterproofing was key. While untreated paper obviously disintegrates with moisture, these wartime variants were soaked in tongue oil, boiled linseed oil or tree resin, then heat cured to lock in durability. This made them not just water resistant, but sometimes nearly water sealed. Japanese troops wore paper fiber raincoats that could endure months of jungle exposure. Some German logistics units used paper fiber tarps to protect mechanical parts from freezing rain. Certain Soviet emergency ponchos used similar fiber layering. Even downed pilots reported cutting sections of these fiber tarps for makeshift ground sheets or wind barriers. There are, you know, verified cases of bunker entrances reinforced with wax-treated fibre cloth when wood was scarce. After bombardment, the cloth was still attached, stiffened and functional even when metal fragments had embedded in it. 
You don't need World War II machinery to apply the principle behind this cloth. It's about combining shredded cellulose with binding oils or resins to create layered tension strength. Modern survivalists can replicate a simplified version using craft paper, waterproofing oil, and a heat source. First, take multiple layers of heavy-duty craft or fiber-reinforced paper. Next, treat each sheet with boiled linseed oil or tongue oil, letting it partially cure until tacky. Then, layer the sheets in alternating grain orientation for strength. After that, compress under weight or clamp between boards. Finally, heat cure slowly in a dry environment until flexible but firm. You'll end up with a stiff, tear-resistant panel that can serve as a wind barrier floor mat, water-resistant container wrap, or emergency field tarp reinforcement. It won't beat modern synthetics like ripstop nylon, but in a resource collapse scenario, this knowledge becomes, well, priceless. If soldiers during the Second World War could survive typhoons, trench floods, and even bomb shock waves using fiber cloth made from repurposed paper pulp, then honestly, you really can't afford to overlook low resource fabrication methods. Now, canvas is great, but it does require cotton or linen. In a supply chain breakdown, you may not have that luxury, but cardboard, craft paper, and natural oils? Those are, well, far more accessible. Knowing how to turn disposable scraps into durable, layered fiber shields really does put you ahead of the curve. The resilience of war materials didn't come from high-tech plastics. They came from intelligent layering, chemical treatment, and enforced compression. This is, in fact, the same principle used in today's ballistic laminates, fiberboard armor trials, and waterproof survival tarps. Try creating a small sheet yourself and, you know, stress test it. Drench it in oil, let it set, flex it, bend it, try to tear it. Once you understand how Second World War fiber cloth functioned, you'll see why it could take shrapnel pressure without falling apart. You also understand how soldiers relied on innovation when metal and canvas simply weren't enough. If this kind of wartime survival engineering hits you the way it hits us here at Warfield Survival, then stick around. We dig deeper into lost wartime knowledge that modern prepping communities really do need to resurrect. Subscribe, share this with someone who still thinks canvas is king, and keep learning from the battlefield.